From cameras to your phone, AI already knows everything about you. Imagine you walk out of your house, phone in hand, headphones in, possibly checking a message before heading to work. Nothing strange except that every movement you make is discreetly recorded. A street camera records your face. Your smartwatch monitors your pulse. Your phone pings cell towers to track your whereabouts. Even your coffee app predicts your order before you open it. None of this appears dramatic, but behind the scenes, visible algorithms are stitching it together into a crystal clear story of you. You are more than just a person traveling through the globe. You are data in motion, and AI is monitoring, remembering, and forecasting. We used to associate surveillance with dystopian films, including men in suits, shadowy chambers, and flickering monitors. However, in 2025, the watchers are not human. They're automatic, relentless, and far more perceptive. AI isn't only seeing anymore, it's understanding. And this alters everything. Let's start close to home, literally. You set up a smart doorbell for safety. It sends a notification when someone approaches the door. Nice, right? However, the modern doorbell is more than simply a camera. It is a miniature surveillance center powered by Edge AI. It does not simply film, it interprets. It discovers who visits frequently, who stays too long, and who walks their dog by your house every day. Consider an entire street with hundreds of doorbells that are all synced and connected to cloud servers. Suddenly, your community has become a small-scale monitoring network. That is not science fiction. That is happening right now. When those cameras begin sharing data, synchronizing with local police systems or, or private security networks, your morning jog, delivery, or late-night pizza run could find up in someone's pattern database. We used to avoid security cameras because they recorded we now fear them because they understand. AI-powered surveillance that can detect faces, read license plates, evaluate gait, walking pattern, and even forecast whether someone appears anxious or suspicious. That isn't guesswork, it's pattern recognition. In one real-life scenario, police in New Orleans discreetly installed facial recognition cameras throughout the city. These were not just observing crowds, they were identifying people in real time. The people had no idea. The system did not ask. Consider this on a global scale. Entire smart cities with millions of networked cameras that use AI to tag, track, and interpret. The anonymity of going down a busy street, it's gone. The city sees you, knows where you've been, and most likely where you'll go next. Every touch, scroll, and pause generates data. AI models educated on billions of user activities can predict your next move alarmingly accurately. Not only which ad you'll click, but how you'll feel at 9 p.m. What kind of article soothes you? Or which friend you'll text when you're lonely? We don't see it because we find it convenient. The music software knows your vibe. The newsfeed captures your interest. However, convenience is a trade-off. The price is privacy. You are no longer being observed in secret. You're offering your habits, basking in the comfortable glow of personalization. The frightening part, AI does not need to hack your secrets. It simply connects the dots. You share a vacation photo. You tap your gym check-in. You've ordered dinner at 8.37 p.m. three nights in a row. Each of these is innocuous on its own, but when combined, they produce a pattern so unique it could only belong to one person, you. This is known as the mosaic effect, in which AI stitches together fragmented fragments of public or semi-private data to create a single, vivid portrayal of a person's life. AI does not seek permission to learn. It absorbs information from anything it comes into contact with. You did not consent to the use of your Instagram selfies to train face recognition models. However, many were. You did not agree to having your voice communications used to train AIs how to express emotion. But it did happen. When data may be duplicated, shared, and reinterpreted infinitely, the concept of informed consent is rendered meaningless. AI systems are massive and enormously leaky. Data is everywhere and so is risk. Systems educated on personal information can inadvertently remember it, even duplicate it if cleverly pushed. Some early AI chatbots have divulged fragments of genuine names, emails, or personal information buried in their training sets. Scale that to billions of users. Even more alarming is the proliferation of AI memory in devices. Imagine your laptop taking a screenshot of each window you've opened every few seconds to help you recall past tasks. That sounds helpful. Until you discover your private chats, medical data, and passwords might all be stored in that memory. And when does that data transfer to the cloud? That isn't a memory. It's a risk of flawless recall. 
No need for tinfoil hats. Here's what no privacy looks like in regular life. You enter a store, the cameras recognize you, compare your previous purchases, and modify pricing on digital shelves based on your purchasing patterns. You attend a protest. The technology records your face and tags your social relationships. Your insurance provider utilizes the data from your smartwatch to adjust your premiums based on your stress level. You are rejected a job because an AI assessed your online tone and declared you unstable. All of this is entirely plausible. Each of these scenarios has already occurred somewhere in the world. This is not about paranoia. It is about power. Whoever controls the data controls the story of your life. You've heard it. I don't mind if I'm being watched. I have nothing to hide. However, privacy is not about hiding. Rather, it is about control. It is not hopeless, but it is not easy. First, awareness is important. The more we know about how AI systems track and infer, the better we can defend ourselves. Second, demand transparency. Ask how your data is used, where it goes, and who controls it. Some corporations hide behind the term AI-powered as if it were magic. However, magic should not substitute accountability. Third, advocate for regulations. Privacy legislation, such as Europe's GDPR, were only the beginning. The next generation of regulations focus on AI inference, because the problem is not simply what data we provide, but what AI guesses about us. Finally, rethink the technology itself. Not all artificial intelligence has to compromise privacy. Some can be built to secure it, such as processing data locally, encrypting by default, and providing people control. Surveillance gadgets can also serve as emancipation tools and as an issue of design and demand. Privacy isn't a luxury. It's essential for freedom. When every movement, glance, and keystroke can be studied, self-expression is reduced. You begin to censor yourself, not out of guilt, but out of awareness. That is how domination begins. Not with force, but with silent compliance. AI does not need to lock you up in a cell. It only requires you to act predictably. And when your behavior is predictable, your freedom is already limited. AI is not evil. It's quite powerful. It can diagnose ailments, apprehend criminals, and even avert calamities. However, if left unchecked, it has the potential to utterly eliminate privacy, making being alone a distant memory. For the time being, the decision is still up to us. We can choose to create systems that empower without spying. Alternatively, we can succumb to convenience and become complacent. Because every smart tool we use, every helpful tip we accept, takes us one step closer to a world in which the distinction between public and private is no longer there. So the next time your phone auto-suggests a response that feels too accurate, or your smart home answers a question you didn't ask, remember that privacy does not end with a bang. It finishes gently with a tap, scroll, and shrug. Taking away privacy through AI is not just a thought. It's a shift in culture, ethics, and psychology that changes what it means to be human. As technology evolves, privacy moves from being a basic right to becoming a rare luxury, something only a few can fully protect. Every click, movement, and decision becomes measurable data, shaping detailed digital versions of ourselves. The lines between public and private territory blur to the point where we can no longer tell which parts of our lives are truly ours. The danger isn't only in the act of surveillance itself, but in the way it silently influences behavior. People perform differently when they feel watched. Creativity is limited, curiosity is tamed, innovation slows, and authenticity slowly fades away. This panopticon effect, as many thinkers describe, turns societies into systems of self-policing, where people follow rules not because they believe in them, but because they fear visibility. Yet despite this challenging reality, there remains hope in thoughtful design and informed understanding. Ethical AI development can embrace privacy-preserving computation, federated learning, and strong anonymization techniques to protect identities while still allowing technology to advance. We can create systems that remember less, collect less, and yet respect more. There is no doubt that AI already knows us, our preferences, patterns, weaknesses, but the real question is whether we will reclaim control over what it learns and how that knowledge is used. The end of privacy is not inevitable. It is a choice shaped by convenience and complacency. True progress will never come from smarter algorithms alone. It will come from smarter governance, deeper transparency from corporations, and a renewed cultural understanding that privacy is not secrecy, 
It is dignity, autonomy, and the space where humanity grows. If you love diving into the wild world of AI and how it's shaping our future, hit that subscribe button because trust me, this is just the beginning.